We've touched on modulation in several of the videos, but let's look at how it works a little bit more closely. Now, modulation adds motion to a sound by having a modulation source affect a target parameter in some way, and we can set all this up in the modulation routing section over here. Now, there's three ways to set up modulation routings, and we've looked at them all throughout some of the videos. The first is to right-click on a parameter. For example, I can right-click here and decide I want to modulate it with one of these sources. The second way is in this modulation section on the layer page, and it's unique for layer A and layer B, and we can click on this menu and view any of the already existing modulation routings, or we can create new modulation routing here and select the source and target there. And the third way is in the modulation column that replaces the mini browser on the left. So for example, let's say I want to get to that. I'm going to click here and I see there's something routed to sample start. So here's the start time. I'm going to right click on it and I can go show modulation. The velocity is routed to it. Let me just go show modulation and it opens up the modulation view on the left and I can close it with this little X. So that's one way of viewing the modulations, right clicking and going show modulation. The other way is to just manually navigate to it here. So right now I'm viewing the same routing in both of these locations, but I can change it here and view a separate routing here. And the only way to change over here is to right click on one of the parameters and go show modulation and it'll update what's displayed over there. Now a word about how LFOs and other parameters are assigned when we're setting the modulation source over here, we can choose, for example, which LFO we want to use. But when we're right-clicking on a parameter, let's say I'm going to right-click there, and I'm going to go modulate with LFO. If any of the LFOs are already in use, this will automatically choose the next available LFO versus going in this menu here where I can manually determine which one I want. But this will automatically choose the next available one, so convenient to know about that. So we can only view one routing at a time, despite the fact that in this patch, several are already showing. Now, if we do want to view multiple routings all at once, we can view and manage them in this modulation matrix zoom. We can see all the routings and all the controls here at once and see how they're all related to each other and adjust them as necessary. I'm going to close this for a moment and let's look at the parameters here. I'm going to start by initializing the patch and with a raw initialized patch, you'll see that when we go into the modulation zoom, that nothing is set. And there's two pages here, page one and page two. So nothing is set. And if we look here, we'll see that there are no routings and we can start from scratch and build our own. So the first step is to determine a source. And we have up to 34 sources available. So let's say I'm going to use aftertouch, meaning key pressure, how hard I press on my key. So that's going to be my source. Now the source slider here determines the amount of modulation that's going to be sent from the source to the modulation target. Now, the higher the setting is, the more that the source target will be affected. So let's see what the shape does on here on an initialized patch. I'm going to use hard sync just so we can really hear the effects. So let's go under here and under oscillator, let's choose the hard sync. And now this will determine the amount that aftertouch will affect it. And you can see my aftertouch here. If I move this down, we'll hear very little effect. And here we'll exaggerate the effect. So that's the amount that's being sent from this aftertouch to this destination. So here's the target where we set up what we want to modulate. And then you've seen we can set it also by right clicking on the parameter. And this slider over here, the target slider, is a duplicate of the target parameter. So when I move one, the other one moves. Now the blue line that you see in here represents the range of the modulation and the white point indicates the current value. So as I press down, you'll see a white dot that indicates the current value that it's at. And we can invert it. And when we invert it, it changes the modulation source by reversing the values. So it has the opposite effect on the target. So you can see it moving in the opposite direction there versus in positive values. Now there's one more value that's shown that we're not seeing here. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go show modulation so that we can see it in the sidebar here. And we have a smoothing control. And this takes the incoming modulation source and it kind of slows the sharper points down and smooths them out. So let's set up another routing. I'm going to turn the filter on here. I'm 
And I want to modulate that cutoff. So let's go to a new modulation routing. And I'm going to do that one with aftertouch as well. So from my source, I'm going to select aftertouch, and it'll modulate two parameters. And I'm going to go to filter cutoff. And I want a very small range. So let's set the source. Just a small amount. So that's working nicely. It's working now in conjunction with the hard sync. And we see that they're separate here. Now, if we look in the modulation zoom, we can see that we have access to all the same controls. We have the smoothing control, and you'll see they're mirrored. We have the mute and invert button. And here, the source, we can select it there, and the amount slider, which mirrors the amount slider that we see over here. And we have the target destination over there and the target parameter value, which mirrors that. So we can access all the multiple parameters from within here. So that's a little overview of getting started using modulation. And we'll continue with more in the next video.